What's up everybody? It's early in the morning. Um, so I just got here. I ran this print all night. Looks like it took uh, 1,113 minutes and 39 seconds. And I started it 19 hours ago. <laughs> um, so, I don't know why, but this particular plastic, this black plastic I'm using is not really working very well. It's just leaving a lot of funny issues behind. Um, kind of odd and strange. I'm not sure what's going on, but I printed this um, for my phone. And this is going to be my new speedometer on my Honda Hobbit. But, uh, it's hard to tell. i got a lot of support on here. We'll pull this off. Wow, that's really on there. Maybe we won't pull this off. Um, it's hard to tell, but I can see there was a problem. Right here, it looks like something got snagged and it offset the whole entire thing. You can see that really good back here. So... See how there's a big lip right there? So I don't know how well these two are going to be adhered together, but it looks like it's pretty good. So I'm going to break this off here and uh, see what it looks like when I get it off. All right. I took some pieces off. This was some of the back support. Pretty cool looking. Um, so I've decided... Uh, I can't get this off the glass. Um, I've made this one stick too well, so I'm going to take the glass and the part and everything and take it over here and attempt to get it off. Can't believe how hard that is to get off. You can see right there, little mishap. Uh, that looks good on the back. Oh dear. Let's see what we can do. I still can't get it off. That's insane. I used a different uh, method this time for adhering. But man, look at that split all the way around where it offset that thing. It looks like it's adhered together very, very well, so I'm probably going to just leave it and use it as it is if it fits. I can always make another one another time. Alright. Well, I got it off there. I heated it up. And I took this big metal thing took the glass off and I whacked the side of it a couple times so I got it to break loose but I literally broke it loose I've never had this stuff stick so good in my life I used uh, I used the clear melted in acetone instead of the white the white comes off pretty easy but the clear man it sticks so good to the surface of this glass which I, I wanted it to but my goodness it sticks better than the print does to itself that's bad <laughs> A um, little bit of a mishap there on that one edge, but that's perfectly okay because that edge does not matter actually. So I'll just I'll just trim that off and no worries. It did. You see how it offset right there? Well, that bothers me. I don't know why or what happened. Something got nicked and uh, moved everything. But luckily, the rest of it printed without a glitch. So if it would have done it halfway up or something, that'd have been bad. We'll clean this thing up. It's kind of cool. You can see the little circle arcs in there. It's a resolution of the motors themselves. It's kind of interesting. That black always looks real good. Shiny like glossy. Alright, we'll clean this up. See if it fits and I'll show you what it really is. Uh-huh. Resist. What's up everybody? So the finishing video here. I wanted to show you the bracket that I made. Um, I showed you this quite a lot. You've already seen it. It's longer for me, but um, it's been time for me. You guys, it's like instantaneous. But anyway, um, so I'm going to set you down here and show you what I had originally wanted to do and what I ended up doing. So the original idea was there's my phone and I have this... Uh, GPS app that I use 
and it's pretty sweet. Actually, it does it does a pretty good job. It actually uh, it maps me. Um, it gives me altitude. Um, it gives me lots of stuff. And I'm in a Faraday cage right now inside a metal freaking box, so it's not going to show any data. But uh, the idea was to use a uh, where's can you see through there? There's a hole. See the hole right there. The idea was to use a, a strap, a Velcro strap. Um, to hold the bottom of my phone in place. But as I was thinking about it, I thought, man, I could make me a nice little bracket. Um, so I ended up making this little piece that fits right inside those, this is a bad lighting, right inside those holes. And uh, voila, now the phone will not come out. And. Uh, so then I'm like, well, now I've covered up my home button, so how am I going to fix that? Well, I still got it. So what I did is, uh, see if we can get the lighting right in here. I added this little bump on the back. See it? Little bump. Good old focus. And then on the front, of course, I added the little emblem. Uh, why not? There's the bump on the back. You can see it camera doesn't like to focus um, little bump on the back and now uh, the, since the plastic is flexible enough I think I might have, oh, that's right since the plastic is flexible enough I can I can just uh, push it on there and voila so I'm going to actually install this on the uh, Hobbit um, I added this little extra tab on this side to give me something to hold but you know, it's flexible, but um, I don't think it's going to break for what I want. Now, if I had originally designed this thing, I would have put this on a hinge so it wouldn't come off. But that wasn't my intention. Um, but now I know that that works pretty well. So, the bottom of it here is just this little simple bracket. I need a different lighting setup down here. This black plastic. But that uh, that notch you see on there... This piece fits on here, and I've got two screws with uh, washers, and that is actually how it holds it inside the uh, the hole. I'll show you how that show you how that works on the Hobbit. Let's go see if I can set up enough lighting to make this function. All right, I think I got enough light out here that you can see what I'm trying to show you. You can see that the uh, there's actually these notches inside here. And uh, there's three, there's one there, one there, one there, and then there's three straight across the back. And so I've added those notches into my print. And um, this also has a taper to it, so it's big on the outside and smaller on the inside. And I have added the taper on here, it's hard to see, but there is an actual taper on the edge of this thing. And then this ledge right here is the top of this ledge, so... I know the lighting is pretty poor, but I think you, uh, you get the idea here. So it actually fits nice and uh, nice and snug. And then I'm going to open up the front here so you can see how I'm going to attach the inside. All right. So through the uh, the mess of wires in here, you can see if I can tilt this up. You can see exactly how my uh, how this sticks in here. So if I take this out, you can see the back side of those notches, and it's kind of the way it's formed in here. So when I put this in here, those stick out, and then uh, let's see if I can stay out of the light so we can actually maybe I should stay on this side. So we can actually get in there and see. I've got this rounded on one on the top side. And oh, we'll get the here. I don't know. There we go. Alright, so that ends together. So we got here to get this all the way in, push this piece up, and then set these screws all the way out. So and there we go. So that is how it stays in there without coming out. 
That is nicely tighted, tight in there. Um, so this bulb is actually the light for the inside of the uh, um, indicator where this used to be. And you can tell uh, it's a little black, it's been burned out. So what I'll probably end up doing is use this as my power source um, for my power on this thing. What's up, everybody? So I'm continuing on the uh, the mount that I've made, and uh, I wanted to add a power source, and so uh, I had to get a uh, a cable, a 30-pin uh, cable for the iPhone, and also one of these power adapters that I want to use inside of this thing. I think it should work. But uh, it's kind of funny. I went to uh, this place that's called Fry's Electronics. It's a pretty cool store. They've got like everything there it seems like. The one that's close to my place. Uh, thanks to Hexar for showing me that. Got me stuck there. It's a pretty cool store. But I went in there and I wanted to buy these because I knew they had them that fit in my phone because the adapter is kind of smaller than this. It, it, if you buy an aftermarket one they don't fit so this one fit. Um, so I looked them up online, they did have them, so I went in there and looked, and they're like $5.99 or $4.99, uh, and then the power jack is like $4.99, so it's a $10 purchase. And I went in there and started looking, and I found bags that were already open, and they had price reductions on it. Check it out. $1.22 a piece. A spider web. Yes, I need a brush to get it. Okay, well hold on one second, I'll get you a brush. Actually, you can get it, it's a red one over there. 29 22 a piece I mean dollar 22 a dollar 22 less than a three dollar purchase a dollar 22 a piece that's ridiculous that'll make this a pretty cheap fix so we're going to uh, take this back part and run these through these holes and hook it all up and fire it up and see how it works um, I could Daddy? not what is that? that's a bicycle I found on the side of the road for you but I have to fix it yeah. Anyway, we're gonna make this work. See, you can do it. Good job. Now go get them spider webs. That one. Yeah, go get it. Good job. So we'll rig this up. I did try to turn this on with just the battery, and it wasn't quite enough juice because this specifies that it needs 20, 12 to 24 volt. Focus. 12 to 24 volt but it does work with about 6 volt 6.8 volts when it kicked on so I think when this thing is running it'll work just fine so we're gonna give it a shot see what happens alright <clears throat> so I pulled the uh, light bulb out which used to go to the speedometer and I did buy some plugs I only need these even though I got both so these plugs should be the same I hope or close we can make them fit if they're slightly different. Um, then I've got this uh, temporarily rigged up to that power and uh, I will just be soldering the leads right to this thing. And there you go. Oh, Charging. Lights on. So anyway, turn the key on and we're charging. So there you go. Awesome. Should work just fine. I'm going to cut the end off and uh, actually I'm just going to unsolder this and push it through the hole and resolder it and just leave this whole thing as a unit. I think it'll be just fine that way. Well I opted to just cut the cord off the light because I don't think I'm ever going to use it. And then I've fed the cord through the hole and resoldered on the end and we're going to just plug it in and I think it'll work. No big deal. All right, installment complete. Now we'll just see if it actually charges because it's, in theory, under voltage. I got a key problem though. Sometimes the connector might have to take this apart and clean it. Sometimes it doesn't kick on. So, theoretically, it's charging, but uh, it may be under voltage and it may not work correctly, but. Um, yeah, pretty sweet. This comes right out of there. It kind of looks funny, but uh, 
I think it's going to work. Time to get some real data, do some modifications, get more data, and just continue doing that until I got this thing tuned the way I like it. What's up, boys and girls? So this is the last bit of the, uh, the video. I uh, tried to use that little white adapter on my scooter, moped, it's a moped, not a scooter, hot rod, and uh, well, it just didn't work. It said it needed 12 to 24 volts to work, and it just, it did not work. So, I made this um, simple little adapter, USB to uh, 5 volts, uh, input can be anywhere from 0 to 35 volt, well, has to be above uh, the 5 volt limit, of course, but this unit will actually take in 3 volt and regulate it from like 3 to 35 so um, yeah this works really well and I thought uh, well I better create a case for it but first um, this resistor there's actually another resistor under here you have to have a voltage drop of 2 volts on the other two data pins or else the darn thing won't charge silly so I've just got a 100k and a uh, 86k ohm resistor on there doesn't really use any power so I thought well let's 3d print a little case so I'll be soldering the wires on here but uh, just for all purposes of showing you this just nicely fits inside there and then the lid has a little rubber knob which I could have printed but didn't um, and it just holds down the uh, the unit and it does have a recessed lid so it, it fits in there and doesn't fall off and uh, like I said I'll just solder the two wires on here and stick them out and that's it I'll stick this inside the head unit the headlight lamp unit and I've got my charger I did test this it does work I'll probably end up just taking a few dabs of glue and gluing it together that was the intention it doesn't rattle um, because of the little rubber knob there then on the top on the bottom side, inside there I've got two uh, pieces holding the base in. So that's it. Looks like my buddy Rory's here. What what's what's this guy want? Well, you what? You gotta always interrupt my stuff, don't you? What well, golly, I'm right in the middle of a film and you come over here and just just what's up? Nothing. Alright, Russ out. Peace. Have a good day. What's up everybody? I wanted to show you really quickly a uh, an interesting thing on this Hobbit. It has a 6 volt light bulb. Uh, the base looks something like this. Focus. It's got the notches on the side. I went to the local store and I couldn't find this exact model in 6 volt. So I decided I was going to upgrade to the LED version. Um, so I epoxied this stuff in here. It's just a resistor and an LED, a super bright white LED, uh, 200 ohm resistor. So it's pulling, uh, it's actually, I could have used a 160 watt resistor or 160 ohm resistor and it would have been more accurate. But I wanted to be a little under in case I have a higher voltage than I thought I had and uh, you might be asking me why it's at an angle and that is because how it fits in the Hobbit this actually fits in sideways and shines up towards the top it's the high beam light so there's the high beam light uh, LED upgrade simple works I may do some of the other bulbs like this if they burn out pretty cool peace out